Hi, and welcome to another edition of Cowbells and Conversations. Media experts say we have seven seconds to make a first impression. When I first met our next guest, I met him over a video call. I was planning an event for his company, and I was immediately drawn to his energy, his smile, and then I stalked him appropriately on LinkedIn after the phone call. And I, I realized why I really was drawn to him in the video, because when I looked at his profile, he does so much for his community. And I reached back out and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love all the project you're involved with. And so we immediately headed off because we both love people and I loved his energy. Um, since then, we have uh, worked on different projects together and I've gotten to know him better. And I asked him to be a guest today because he is so drawn to people and makes such a huge difference. So at the end of this conversation, you're going to have ideas about what you can do to be a little bit more intentional about your own personal brand. So please help me welcome my guest, Philip Morris. Woo! Welcome. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Allison. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. joining. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. I'm excited to be here. You know, just introduce myself. I'm Philip Morris. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin by way of sunny Orlando, Florida. Uh, I work for a company called Syndicate Claim Services out of Indianapolis. And, you know, at the end of the day, I pride myself and I like to think I'm a, someone who creates connections with people, with animals, with the earth, whatever it may be. And, you know, I just like to exude enthusiasm and positivity to really put it out there on a level that makes people want to mimic that same behavior. As mm -hmm. as day, we all want to be around people that have the right energy. The right oh passion. yeah, for sure. Now tell us what does Syndicate do? So what do you do with them? Sure. So I'm the vice president of marketing and I oversee all of the sales, marketing, business development nationwide uh, and direct a team that's based out of our home office all around the country. So I'm in my home office because of our current circumstances right now. I've been grounded for close to 10 weeks, uh, but any given day, most of the week, uh, most of my days are spent on a plane, on a train, on a boat, whatever means to get me from A to B to meet the people that I need to. Uh, mm -hmm. And Syndicate is a nationwide adjusting firm. We spend, we're the people that you've never heard of that are taking care of the policyholders for the insurance companies that you have that protect your homes, your businesses, uh, your financials, whatever it might be. So we take care of all those things and we put things back together on paper so that way your insurance company can uphold the promise of making sure that things are done properly when something does happen. Got it, okay. And you have two children. Tell me about your children. I have two awesome, I call them mongrels, uh, because sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. They're kind of like those Sour Patch Kids. Sometimes they're sweet, sometimes they're sour. Uh, Dane, we call him the Great Dane. Obviously, he's not named after Ron Dane, the football player, although he is a big uh, sports nut to only be five. He's good at everything, even better than me at most things, but I can't tell him that. Uh, my princess, Isla, who is two and a half. Oh. Uh, feeling like she's almost 14. She runs the house currently. That is a real thing. So if you don't have children or if you have a only girls, you probably understand my pain of knowing that they do at the end of the day run everything. And it's our job to make sure that, you know, they know how important, how special, and just sometimes you just have to let them be. Right. <laughs> well, she is a princess. Is. Um, so you and I have talked about our own personal brand you know, really being intentional for what we're doing, because it's not just the companies that we work for, but it's what we do outside of work. So as I had mentioned before, as I stalked you, you have been so involved your entire life, like really giving back to your own community. So first, why, how did you get into that? But also like, why is that so important as far as for everyone to do something in their own community? I think it's a, it's a way to stay again. It's that connection. It connects you to what's important and what makes you feel deep down that you're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. but also inspires the people that may need more or have more that don't have as much as you have, that they're people that are willing. And so for me, it goes back to, it goes all the way back to, I think when I was 14 and a half, uh, growing up in Florida, I didn't have, you weren't able to get a job until you were 16. So I looked for every opportunity to volunteer. My mom works and has worked in healthcare for 20 plus years uh, in assisted living facilities, nursing homes. And I spent a lot of time painting nails, calling bingo, uh, delivering <laughs> lunches. Uh, Mrs. Agurtha Marion, who has since passed, God bless her soul, uh, was a great inspiration to me. She lived to be 101 years old. Oh my God. Uh, and I spent a lot of afternoons and summers and after school uh, painting nails and sending just, Sarah, you know, just to, to learn and get a sense of who she was. Mm -hmm. And these are things that wisdom you picked up. And I said, over the years, it's been that same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, do I spend time at nursing homes? Not as much anymore, but I, you know, I'm an animal person. So the animal shelters, the Humane Society, uh, here during COVID, we adopted 
uh, and rescued two cats. We drove all the way to Michigan uh, to go get them. Uh, two mm -hmm. purebred, uh, what do you call it, snowshoe Siamese uh, and a Lynx Point Siamese cat, uh, kittens that are now eating at a house and home. I think they eat more than the dogs that we used to have. Uh, <laughs> they're wonderful. So, you know, shout out to Specialty Pure, Specialty Purebred Cat Rescue of Michigan. Uh, mm -hmm. They are nationwide, but you know, it's things like that. I said, I, I sit on our board for uh, several nonprofits here in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. uh, both a, a kind of troubled youth for, you know, young boys under 18 here in Milwaukee, which is very near and dear to me, not that I was in that community, but it's the community that I live in. Mm -hmm. I said, so anything I can do to help the parts of the community that nobody else will that get forgotten, you know, I want to do something there. You know, everybody has the Boys and Girls Club opportunity or the YMCA, and, you know, those are great, but there are smaller things inside your own community that most people have never heard about or don't know about, and that can make a big difference, even at spending time. So once a month and then every couple of weeks, I go and spend time in the evening just to go and sit with groups of young men and, and talk about life and tell them how that, you know, what you think is going to hinder you for the rest of your life is not going to. It's these small choices and decisions we make and how we present ourselves mm -hmm. that give us opportunities that, you know, will unfold into you never know. It can steamroll into nothing but positivity, nothing but good things if your intent is correct and if you're being, you know, as authentic and true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so you, you're very involved in your community. I love how you get involved with animals as well. Are you going to keep those kitties? Oh, yes. They're, okay, uh, so it's not just a foster, is, like you're in. Correct. No, they, okay. they're, they do foster animals. The, uh, however, my wife had never had a cat before. Mm -hmm. And for the first two weeks, she's the one who made the decision when she saw their cute little sweet faces in their pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, right about now is about the time I'm normally talking about them. They could run up the stairs. They'd be sitting right behind me somewhere. Uh, <laughs> clearly doing something else right now. Right. Uh, Every waking minute of the day, I look over on the couch in the evening time, and she's taking selfies with the cats. She's got the cats there on top of her, and she just <laughs> in heaven. I said, so it's one of those where... Right. She used to take selfies with you, and now it's not happening, right? She never took selfies before. <laughs> All right, well, then it's fine. <laughs> you know, so she's converted to a cat person. She's always right. loved dogs, but now we're 100%. We're These cats aren't going where they're, they're part of the family. Yep, I love that. Um, so I had an opportunity to go deeper with your team and get feedback as far as like how they like you as a leader. And it was extremely positive as far as how you motivate them, how you keep them accountable. So what are some things that you do with your own team to really get them to own their own personal brand, but also not just during this time, but always, how do you keep your team positive and focused? Because you're an extremely effective leader in doing this. And I know people would love tips on what you do behind the scenes with your team. Yes. So I said behind the scenes and kind of day to day, what I'd spend time with my team doing is, you know, just trying to get them to hone in on their personal brand during, you know, my team has spent out there on the road, they're traveling, they're meeting clients, their day to day, their focus becomes the individual they're talking to. And so typically they're in group settings, they're out at conferences, out at trade shows mm -hmm. during lockdown. And this can be universal, you know, with lockdown or not they don't have the opportunity. We can't go to the places and do the things the same way. Mm -hmm. So in order to think about them differently, I challenged them all, you know, weeks, weeks, even in going into this and said, this is the time to focus on you, build your brand, mm -hmm. put your personality into everything you do, even though that we're already doing that outside, but it's not about a, a shirt and tie or a blouse or, you know, our company branding on us anymore. It's about, you know, show them all they know right now is what they can see or what they can hear. And, the ways that they interact on their own daily. So now the, the playing field has been leveled because you're, everybody's equals. We're all sitting at home. You know, we're all potentially wearing pants or not wearing pants. Right. And <laughs> so we get to these things where show yourself. So a good example, uh, Lydia on my team, who is one of the newest members of our team, and she's awesome. Uh, she's out in San Diego. Mm -hmm. She has zero opportunity to get onto the community and meet the clients, meet the people that we deal with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I challenged her said, do more, show yourself, you know, show the community, go out there on LinkedIn, go out there on Instagram, go out there on your own mediums, forget the company site and make it about your brand. Because if, you know, you would know as well as I do, people like to work with who they know, who they trust, who they like. Mm -hmm. And you typically can't really have, you know, one of the three or two of the three, you kind of have to have all three. Yep. And what this time has shown us is that we've gained a lot of engagement personally indiv as individuals, as well as with the company because people can see what we're doing. People are gonna say, oh gosh, that's what he's reading? Oh, that's what she's doing? Lydia's great at yoga. She's doing these handstands. She goes out, you know, when she does, she's able to get away from her home. She's doing handstands and headstands and poses, <laughs> you know, out in the desert or out in the mountains. I said, it's an, of interest. So like-minded people will gravitate towards that. And oh, so yeah. with that, that piece is just 
driving them forward with building that brand, being authentic. I think the most important part is, is authenticity because who you are on the camera, on your social media should be who you are outside of it. It shouldn't be scripted. It shouldn't be a show. For sure. Yeah, I totally agree. It's It's been fun to see all the filters and barriers kind of drift away because I think before this happened, there were so many people who just put their best pictures and all sorts of filters. But now, you know, we are in people's homes and we are meeting their children and their pets. And like, I feel like it's it's become, it's made us more human because right. you, you're absolutely right. We do love to do business with people that we like and trust, but also you find that you have things in common with people that you never thought you would. Because if people say we don't judge people, they're lying. We totally judge people. It's like, oh, they would never do this or I can't relate to them. But then when you get to know people differently, you start to really figure out that you do have something in common. Absolutely. And so with you, you, what's your main, like, I know you do Instagram, like, is that your main source that you put your energy as far as where you build your own brand or? I do. I, that's, that's the really, I, I'm no brand expert or anything like that. Yes, I'm in marketing and I have resources. I have great people around me that make all this stuff, you know, do what I, my, my ideas can come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do. I so said, I can promote, you know, my brand, who I am and the things that I believe in, you know, through Instagram. But I said, for the most part, I said, the person I am on Instagram is the same as I am on, you know, LinkedIn. I said, mm -hmm. I do a YouTube channel that has nothing on it. I said, because I get so <laughs> self-conscious about, oh, I, I don't think I have a good speaking voice. I, yeah, I love I, your voice. Are you kidding I, me? You're like a talk show daily. host. And I will put my headphones on so I don't have to hear myself. <laughs> but people keep asking me to read stuff and, you know, do things, talk about these things. So that's probably going to be my next outlet is, you know, putting together, you know, a it's not going to be any long podcast. It'll probably be like three minutes with Phil. That's all you get. It's <laughs> about as comfortable as I can get. I love being in front of people. Yep. But even this, I said, I get the butterflies and the anxiety. I said, it's all there. I said, I like speaking sometimes too much, but you know, it's out of my element, mm -hmm. even though it should be right in there. But you know, I'd say LinkedIn and Instagram are probably the two, my, my two primary sources. Okay. And I have always coached people. It's like, if people are involved in their community, they volunteer to actually put it on your LinkedIn profile because a lot of people don't. And then we don't get to see that connection that we could have had. So I would encourage people, if your LinkedIn profile is not updated for what you do outside of work to definitely add it because that really does help your personal brand. But what would be your advice for people in the next 30 days? So let's say, or even like at the end of June, what would you tell people to do? Like if they could do two actions to really start to build their own personal brand for like what they do, you know, outside of work that perhaps people don't know that of course is appropriate to tell other people on social media, because side note, everything that you put on social media, which everyone knows is forever. Like everything, my friend Brian Berger says, everything's on the record. It really is. But also everything that you like, like anything that you like as far as a company, people can tell what you like. So also be careful that way. But what is your, what would be two actions that people could do realistically in the next 30 days to really help their own personal brand? Two actions. So I'd say the two actions that, that were, was advice to me would be if it's LinkedIn and I'm going to use LinkedIn because it's a very broad profile. You can use it for personal or professional, you know, uh, kind of a little, little bit more of a professional extension than, you know, an Instagram or a Facebook page. But yep. if you're, yes, you have a company that you represent, have that stuff, have your information, but make your LinkedIn about more than just your company, because it's you. Mm -hmm. it's, so that to be all branded. Yes, if your company has guidelines and has all these things right. that- yes, we have There a are a lot of regulations like in the financial- Correct, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. With the same token, if you go to my LinkedIn page, it said, you know, I come and speak and I, I describe myself from a place of, you know, myself outward of the things I do, I said. So it's about creating connections, about building and growing with people and creating the things that are important to me and how they translate and relate to the things that I do. It's still never about, just syndicate or just the past companies I work for. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does relate directly and I will notify and, and note those things. But like you said, put your, your extracurricular things out there. Put where, where you volunteer, mm -hmm. you know, put the interest that you have, you know, if it's books or authors, I have no, you know, I have no problems letting people know. I said my, my affiliations with my uh, fraternity, you know, the alumni there with Alpha Tau Omega, uh, the Adro chapter at University of Central Florida. I said, I have no problem putting out there, you know, my involvement with the Blue Goose or with the IACF, which is the, uh, insurance and uh, oh, I forgot about the IACF. It's the insurance industry. Maybe something. Yes, <laughs> those things because you'll find people, and I've made a lot of connections personally and professionally by way of just like yourself. Hey, I saw that you were interested in this. So am I. I never mm -hmm. told anybody, but we can talk about that. 
And so that would be my number one. And the okay. second is just be authentic. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my biggest pet peeves is something that, you know, and I was guilty of this, go back four or five years ago, because my headshot on, you know, on LinkedIn was a professional headshot that I paid a fortune for, went and had somebody do and got this series of it. It's me, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a static version that's just for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And so what I found is that, you know, I've taken my own and got really good professional images that I've taken outside natural light things that show who I am, mm -hmm. that translate and relate more and let people know your real pictures of what you see of yourself mm -hmm. are way more powerful than, mm -hmm. you know, a hand ham stock sitting right. image from, you know, some video. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I have one of those too, but yes. <laughs> good. So be authentic. So that <laughs> is going to be the cowbell idea to show people who we are because, and also to put our interests out there because it is a human connection. And this time has really showed us that we can, because you, you said it perfectly. It's like, we're all on totally even playing field right now. You know, the gazillionaires are still at their house, you know, doing this. And so it's like, we can connect with humans, but we need to put it out there, be authentic because that helps our own personal brand, but it also helps your company because they show that they actually have awesome humans hired. So I want to thank you for your great ideas for cowbells and conversations. And then I know people are going to want to connect with you. So if they want to, on LinkedIn, obviously they can find you through your name, Philip Morris, but yes. how else could they connect with you? Is that the best way? That is the best way. They can connect with me if they want to find me on Instagram and see some of the things that I post out there and the, the videos cats. and things I follow. The cats, I will put more cat pictures. Okay. I have had requests for more cat <laughs> yes. Instagram. Uh, I will gladly, you know, once this wherever this goes, I will tag myself and put my Instagram on the handles. You know, okay. I'm not into all that world, but I have them, so make sure you have them as well. Good. And then as far as syndicate, how can people get in touch with you or your team? Yes, they can get in touch with us via LinkedIn on there. They can connect with any one of my team members uh, that are affiliated and associated with me there. Uh, they can go to the website at www.syndicateclaims.com, learn more, but feel free to reach out. At the end of the day, it's not about, you know, doing business, it's about getting to know if we're the right, you know, fit and the right connection for you guys or whoever that company might be out there. So reach out to me, connect. We'll learn if we're going to talk football, talk cooking, talk travel, and then we go from there. Mm -hmm. I love it. Good. Well, I'm so excited to have you in my life. You're always so positive, fun, and everything that you post adds value to your entire audience. So thank you for taking time. You're thank awesome. You. And you gave us a fabulous idea to be authentic and actually tell people what we like to do. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you.